Boots, Bats and Balls on Six Towns Radio. OK, this is Dave Lee for Six Towns Radio. I'm very pleased to be able to say on the other end of the line is former footballer Errington Kelly. Are you there, Errington? Yes, I'm here. Thanks very much. I'm really honoured to be um, talking to you. <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you. Um, can I just uh, throw some questions at you? Um, yes. Is it true that you were discovered by Roy Hodgson? Um, no, that's not true. <laughs> um, it's not true to me. I was discovered by um, Terry Cooper. That's right, the, the former England player, yeah? That's right. Uh, now, he, he, was, he, was he at Bristol Rovers or Bristol City at the time? Yeah, Bristol Rovers. Oh, right. Manager of Bristol Rovers at the time. Yeah, because he, he later joined, uh, he became manager of, he was manager of both, wasn't he? That's right, he was, yeah. He went to Bristol City um, soon after. So how long were you at Bristol Rovers for? I think I was there um, a couple of seasons. And you, you played with a, lo- a lot of uh, great players. You sort of, um, uh, I think Alan Ball was there, Mick Shannon, uh, Ian Holloway. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I did um, meet some um, great players, yeah. Um, like you said, Alan Ball, Mick Shannon, and obviously um, later on, um, Gary Mabert. That's right, yeah. yeah. And uh, obviously, Chandrakulis was a youth coach at the time. Because he he'd been away, he'd been to uh, I think it was uh, Hong Kong or something like this. So was he there right. when he joined? Yeah, I remember him as a, like a youth coach. That's what I remember. Chandrakulis, yeah. a, a, a very enthusiastic, um, knowledgeable coach. Right. Because yeah, he'd, he'd been with uh, Bristol Rovers before. I think he'd left and then joined, rejoined after you'd you'd become a player there. I think it was something yeah. like that. That's wrong. I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, have you got any sort of memories of, of, of him and his style apart from, you know, uh, the youth coach thing? Because he was still playing, I think, if I remember rightly, as well. Was he still yeah, um, I think he, um, I don't think he was playing that often in the first team. Yeah. But he was, like, um, helping out in the reserve. Um, I, I think he had a, maybe had a slight injury problem, if I remember, so he couldn't really play that much. Oh, right. But, yeah. Um, yeah, but he was, uh, yeah, a very enthusiastic person. From what, from what I remember, a real football person, you know, knew what he's talking about from an early age, from when he was coaching earlier. I mentioned uh, Roy Hodgson there, because I th- I've, if I remember rightly, uh, you went over to Bristol City um, right. after that. Was Roy Hodgson there? Can you remember? Um, no, I don't remember Roy Hodgson being there at all. I remember um, when I went over to Bristol City, um, it was when Terry Cooper went over from Bristol Rovers to Bristol City. Oh, I see, yeah. Because Bobby Gould took over um, Bristol Rovers. Yeah. Yeah, and so I was there when Bobby Gould... Uh, took over Rovers, and then he released me at the end of the season, then I went to Bristol City. Oh, right, yeah. And then after that, uh, uh, Bobby Gould moved to Coventry, and you went over yeah. to Coventry, but right. that, that didn't really work out so well. Well, it uh, depends how you look at it. Um, to be honest with you, when I was at Coventry City, I was top scorer in the reserves. Yeah. I was vying for a place, um, along with um, John Hendry, um, Dave Bennett, um, Mickey Adams, well, um, the strikers, Dave Bamber, yeah. I can remember their names vividly. Um, oh, Charlie yeah. George even came at a time. So there was a, there was a bit of competition, and uh, I was obviously up there. I was up there. I was top scoring the reserves. But um, when Peter United came in for me, uh, Bobby Gould called me in and said, look, there's an opportunity for, of first-team football. Um, it might mean dropping down a league, but... And I thought to myself, well, I believe in myself, I've got the talent, I should just go and, you know, hopefully I'll be flying up the leagues again. But um, that's what really um, didn't actually happen, yeah. Yeah, I had a great time at, yeah. uh, at Peterborough United, but I didn't actually um, make the big time, because my dream was to play for Spurs, so I didn't quite reach that. But, but you were at Peterborough for about four seasons, I think you were sort of... Uh, cause, right, yeah. Because you were very much a winger, you know, but you managed to knock in the goals, like one in about one in four games, I think you were knocking in goals, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I saw myself actually as a striker, you know what I mean? I always wanted to wear a number 10, like Pele and all the great Brazilians, you know. <laughs> and yeah. um, But because I was just naturally quick, it was obviously clubs tended to put me wide, so I played wide quite a lot. But, I, you know, but I was a goal scorer. Yeah, because when your brother talks about you in, in the book, he talks about your speed and the fact that you could beat, beat players really quickly and, 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 and cut in and all this sort of stuff, you know. So, naturally, sort of remember you as a winger, but uh, as you say... That's you, right. But you then, you then went from Peterborough, you went out to, to play in Sweden. Is that right? Yeah, I went... Yes, that's right. And uh, you got to play... We were, were, were in the same team as, as Tony? Yeah, I was in the same team as Tony. We played in a team called Jimenez up, up north Sweden in a, in a town called Umeå. Oh, right. And we, pl- we pl- actually played on the same pitch that Brazil played in the 1958 World Cup. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So Pele Garincha and all the gang played on the same pitch, 
changed in the same changing rooms as me and my brother. Oh, cool. But, you know, a few years later. Yeah. How many years were you out there? Memory. Were you out there sort of like two or three years? Is that what, was that? No, before? no, just, I just spent um, like one season. Oh, right. Season yeah. there with my brother, yeah. And then... And he then, came He came back from there and then uh, signed to Stoke. Yes, and boy, do we remember. Does he go on about yeah. it a lot? Sorry? Does he go on about those times at Stoke a lot? Of course he does, yeah. Especially <laughs> when he um, made Bruce Grobler. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He never stops talking about that, yeah. We're, I'm glad, because when we had him in to interview, uh, we spoke of nothing else either, so, you know, I think he must have been quite pleased about that. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I can't top that, you see, so oh. he's a winner all the way there. Absolutely. It's, uh, you've got a great footballing family. Of course, we met your other brother, Mel, as well, you know, and he's, he, he played a, a lot of football as well. Yeah, Mel played a lot in um, local football. He didn't actually make it professional. Yeah, that's right. But his, his children, he's got two sons who are very talented young boys. Boys. Yeah, they're, they're at Arsenal's academy, but they just got involved in, you know, the teenage gang culture, so, you know, they didn't obviously have their minds in the right place, so they're out of the football at the moment, oh. And um, but they're still young enough to get back in, so we're trying to coax them back in. They've got the natural ability, they just need um, to get their mindset in the right place. So we could still see some uh, Kellys back on the sort of uh, uh, the footballing scene? Yes, you could still. We'll look out for that. Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, um, in case like uh, you want to know what I'm doing now, I'm actually um, I'm qualified English teacher now. I'm working in uh, Birmingham, at a secondary school in Birmingham. And uh, you know what? They, you know what the kids are like. What? They found out my name. They were they were googling, and they, you know, obviously everything is on Google now, isn't it? Wikipedia and Google. Yeah, yeah. So like they're all asking me for autographs, you know. <laughs> oh wow! You, have you got some signed pictures already for them? That's what you should do. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, and you know some of them like they're only fourteen or fifteen, so like they weren't even born when I was playing, you know. Oh, that's cool. That's absolutely cool. yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Errington, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dave. It's been the same. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. 